Good morning, everybody, and praise the Lord Church. My name is Patrick Massa, and whether you're joining us for the very first time or you've been worshiping with us, welcome to this online service on behalf of our lead pastor, Pastor Charles Obwana. Welcome to Hope for Today. Friends, our hope for today is the Spirit of God interceding through us, declaring the purposes of God in our time, even when we are not aware of it. The Bible says, says I have heard their cry. God hears our cry. We are not settlers in this world. Jesus said we are in this world, but not of this world. You need to use the very tool that God has put in your hands. Whatever assignment he has given you, whatever task he has given you, he has also given you a tool. Our God is mighty. The Bible says he's the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. The Bible says what he decides to do, he can do mightily. Every Sunday at 6 p.m. only on Google TV. Hope for Today is a broadcast of Deliverance Church, Uganda. Because of your generous giving, broadcasts like these and many others have been made possible. And behind the scenes is quite an amount of work, but you have kept giving. So we would like to encourage you to continue in the same spirit. You can also give by making a drop-off at our offices. The church secretariat remains open throughout the week from Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And now, church, prepare your hearts to receive from the Lord as we get into a time of praise and worship led by our very own High Praise Choir. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Who oh, am I that you are mindful of me? That you
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The grace of the Lord is enough for us. Amen. So let him be enthroned in, our, in his majesty. As we worship him, his majestic, majestic in power. Amen. Amen. All right.
Greetings in Jesus' name. This is Laban Jumba, been a pastor in Deliverance Church Kansanga for many years, and uh, leadership in uh, intercessors for Uganda and intercessors for Africa. Today I want to share on trembling at God's word. The idea comes from the book of Ezra, chapter 9, and we begin by reading from verse 1. When these things were done, the leaders came to me, this is Ezra talking, saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands with respect to the abominations of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Amorites and the Moabites and Egyptians and the Amorites. For they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons so that the holy seed is mixed with the peoples of the lands. Indeed, the hand of the leaders and the rulers has been foremost in this trespass. So when I heard these things, I tore my garment and my robe, and I plucked out some of the hair from my head and beard and sat down astonished. Then everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel, assembled to me because of the transgression of those who had been carried away captive. And I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. I will stop there. This was after the return of a number of groups from exile back into the land of Israel. Ezra was among those who came last. And he came and he discovered that the people of Israel, those who had returned, had got mixed up with these foreign tribes who worshipped idols and worshipped demons. And God had told the people of Israel not to get mixed up with those people. Now, the leaders, many leaders had got wives from these tribes. And uh, the Bible says the Holy Seed had got mixed up. Now, here we're not advocating tribalism or racism, but God had a reason for stopping his people from getting mixed up with the foreigners. It's because they were worshipping demons and worshipping idols. So he didn't want his people to get mixed up with those, those things. Now, I want to pick up from verse 4. It says, Then everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel assembled to me because of the transgression of those who had been carried away captive. 
and I sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. I want us to look at Ezra. You see, he got this information about the way the people of Israel had got mixed up with these foreigners and married their daughters. But do you have to get so disturbed? Do you have to pull out your hair? Do you have to pull out your beard? Do you have to sit astonished? Some of us would have said, well, I mean, they have done something bad. Uh, let me go and I talk to them and I see what will happen. But this man got so disturbed, so disturbed. And the Bible says he sat down and uh, just waited there in astonishment and disturbance until the evening. The whole day he was just there. Now then, we read again in verse 4 that everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel came and joined him. Now, what does it mean to tremble at the words of God, of the God of Israel? The reason I'm talking about this topic is I've discovered in our day, you hardly find even believers in the church who tremble at God's word. We take God's word as if it's a word from some of our, you know, friends, uh, maybe uh, casual acquaintances, uh, who talk to you, and uh, you may take their words seriously, but most of the time it is just casual. But then on the other hand, we find people like Ezra and the group who joined him as men and women who, when they, when they hear any word from the Lord, they take it seriously. When it is a word of instruction to do something, they run immediately. When it is a word of uh, rebuke, they do what Ezra did. He sat down disturbed the whole day until evening. And his friends who trembled at God's word came and joined him. Now we'll read from chapter 10, the first four verses. Now while Ezra was praying and while he was confessing, weeping and bowing down before the house of God, a very large assembly of men, women, and children gathered to him from Israel. For the people wept very bitterly. The people wept very bitterly. What made them weep? These are people who got convicted when they saw their leader, Ezra, disturbed, and they began to join him, and the conviction led them into weeping bitterly. Verse 2. And Shekaniah, the son of Jehuel, one of the sons of Elam, spoke up and said to Israel, we have trespassed against our God, and we have taken pagan wives from the peoples of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel in spite of this. Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all these wives and those who have been born to them according to the advice of my master, the master here is Ezra, and of those who tremble at the commandment of our God. Again, the word trembling comes out here. And let it be done according to the law. Verse 4, arise, Ezra, for this matter is your responsibility because you are our leader. We also are with you. Be of good courage and do it. Now, we read books concerning revival, and we hear stories from some of the people who, for example, have been um, lived long and experienced some of the days of the revival here in East Africa. And they tell us that sometimes people would preach the gospel, and uh, in the congregation, people begin weeping because there was conviction. These days, you hardly find weeping. Why? Maybe it's because we don't tremble at God's word. When God speaks and uh, you take his word seriously, it brings a response from inside of us where our emotions are, are stirred. These people were weeping and they were trembling 
because of the word, the conviction which came from the experience of the word of God. At this point, I want to look at this man Ezra and we see what his credentials were. If we can go back to chapter 7 and we'll read from verse 6. Verse 6. This Ezra came up from Babylon and he was a skilled scribe in the law of Moses. I want you to note that word, skilled scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. The king, this is the king back in exile, the king granted him all his requests according to the good hand of the Lord his God upon him. Now we'll miss out verse 7 and read verse 8. And Ezra came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king. On the first day of the first month, he had begun his journey from Babylon. If it was months like ours, that would be the first uh, of, the, of January, the first of the first month. He began his journey from Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month, uh, today uh, is the first day of the month of May, uh, he came to Jerusalem. Those days it used to take so long to move from one place to another. Thank God, uh, these days it is so quick. So he came to Jerusalem, arrived in Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. Now verse 10 is what I want. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach statutes and ordinances in Israel. Let's examine this a little bit, that verse 10. Ezra was a student of the word of God, of the Bible. But there is something very interesting about Ezra. Before he would read and study the word, he first prepared his heart. There is something key about preparing your heart before you come to the word of God. We'll be talking a little bit more about trembling at God's word. What is the quality of men and women who tremble at God's word? They are men and women like Ezra. What was Ezra's attitude to the word of God? The Bible says he approached the, the word of God by first preparing his heart. He prepared his heart. So there is heart preparation. Now, of course, I can go to any class, an academic class, read geography, read mathematics, read physics, read uh, whatever discipline, whatever subject. Do I have to prepare my heart? Maybe not. But when it comes to the word of God, we need to prepare our hearts before we approach the word of God. This is the difference between people who have academic qualifications in the study of the word of God and those who may not even have academic qualifications. I'm not saying that it's not good to have the academic qualifications. But people who approach the word of God by first preparing their hearts, he had prepared his heart. And then it says it was to, he had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, that's the word of God, to seek the word of the Lord and to do it. Now, when he got anything from the word of God, he first obeyed that word and he did it. And then afterwards, he taught statutes and ordinances in Israel. That's very much unlike many of us. We read the word and we immediately teach it. I want to ask preachers and believers, have you first practiced and done what you have found in the word of God? And then after the experience of obedience to the word of God, you go out and you teach, to the other, you teach it to the other people. This is a challenge from the experience uh, of Ezra. So let's go through that order again. Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and then to teach ordinances in Israel. 
Now, I'm touched by the way the king uh, in exile addressed him. Let's read this from verse 11. The king was called Ataxaxes, and he wrote a letter which he handed to Ezra to uh, introduce him to the various leaders of the provinces in the great empire. This is a copy of the letter that King Ataxaxes gave Ezra the priest, the scribe, expert in the words of the commandments of the Lord and of his statutes to Israel. Now, earlier we read he was a skilled scribe. Now we realize from the testimony of the king, and this is a heathen king, he says Ezra was a priest and a scribe and expert, expert in the words of the commandments of the Lord and of his statutes to Israel. I'll be following up these words, the skilled and the expert. Now, some years back, many years back, God began to speak to me about the four levels, four levels or four classes of responses to God's word. There are four ways or four classes of people, four groups of people uh, who can respond to God's word. Or there are four ways we can respond to God's word. And uh, I compared these uh, to sand, uh, which we use for building, you know, the sand which we get from seashore. Now, there are four ways we can respond to God's word. I'll go through this uh, very quickly. Now, when you find children with a heap of sand, they smile because they have got somewhere to play. Uh, children come and they jump into the sand because when there is a heap of sand uh, and you jump into it, they, they, you, you get soft landing because it enables you know, the children to play around without fear that they will get hurt. So children respond to sand by playing with it. Now, even with God's word, there are people who play around with God's word. Have you ever attended a party and you are busy taking your juice or your soda and somebody comes to you with a bottle of strong alcohol and he says, oh, Murokole, here is some alcohol to drink. Here is some beer to, for you to drink. And you tell him, no, I don't drink beer. And he laughs at you and he says, but Jesus turned water into wine and uh, for you, you are uh, refused. Please take some. Now, such people play around with God's word. Many times they take the word out of context. And uh, there are very many such people. By the way, King Saul was one of those. You remember God commanded him to lead the people of Israel to fight against Amalek. And he didn't take God's word seriously. He left out a lot of details. And as a result, he was rejected by God. You can read the story. It is in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15. We don't have enough time to go there. King Saul was in that first group. Those who don't take God's word seriously. And they are compared to children who take sand as something to play with. Then there is a second group. The second group are those I call semi-skilled in the use or in the application of the word of God, semi-skilled. And with the sand, I compare them to people who make a living by making brick blocks out of sand. You just take some cement in a certain proportion and the sand and you mix them and you make blocks uh, out of sand. I want to comment that you don't have to have a university degree to make those blocks. Um, is something you can learn from your friends and you go forwards and you make blocks out of sand. Also, people engage in building. Uh, maybe you need a supervisor to build properly. Somebody who has very high qualifications in building technology. But for you to do the laying on you know, of the bricks using sand and uh, cement, you don't need high qualifications. So I call this the same skilled level. Now, when it comes to the word of God, it means those who read and live by the word at basic level, basic level. 
they don't understand too much of the details, uh, but they live by the word and they obey it according to the level at which they approach the word. So it's not a very bad level, but there is a problem there in that when you are semi-skilled, for example, in the use of sand, uh, the earnings you get at the end of the day are not enough to meet all your needs because you're just a semi-skilled laborer. So we need to move on to the next level. And I want to comment that most of us in the churches, most of our church members are at that level, the semi-skilled level. But there is another third group. Those who are skilled in the word, we read earlier that Ezra was a skilled scribe in the word of God. The word skill comes in. Now, when you are to move at this level of the skilled laborer or the skilled person in the word of God, when you are reading and studying, you take notes. And then you use study materials. You may use commentaries and you can inquire from those who have had the advantage to go to uh, Bible school, and uh, you can get, uh, you know, you can check uh, the meanings of certain scriptures you, you don't understand. You can go to them and ask them uh, so that you go deeper uh, in the word. You also live by that word, but at an advanced level because you have dug a little deeper uh, in it. Now, when we look at sand, I compare that third group of people to people who take sand and they make glass out of it. Did you know glass is made out of this common sand? The chemical name for that material is silicon. And many times we talk about silicon glass. Now, for you to get sand and turn it into glass, you cannot be just a semi-skilled person. You need skills. You need to go to school, you need to study some chemistry, you need to know, to, to know some industrial uh, chemistry and to, know, to have some deeper skills in the management of what you've got in your hands. Now, which means there is a third level. Now, listen to this. When I live in Gulu town and I want to build a house, I cannot buy blocks from Kampala. Because even in Guru, we have enough semi-skilled laborers to make blocks for us. If I buy them from Kampala, it will be too expensive to transport them to Guru. Actually, it is the, the money I pay for transport from Kampala to Guru for those blocks will be more than the value of those blocks if I bought them from Guru. Now, which means when you are at this level of the semi-skilled laborer, in the word of God, it is too expensive to transport you from Kampala to Guru to preach. Semi-skilled laborers do not have much ministry because everywhere people have enough of those semi-skilled people in the word of God. They don't need another one. I want to discourage those who are at this level. And then we we'll move on to level number four. Those who are experts in the word of God. Now we've talked about number three that is compared to making glass out of sand, which needs more skills. Number four is even higher. We read about Ezra that was an expert in the word of God. Now those who are experts in the word of God, we have examples like Joshua, people like David, people like Daniel, people like Ezra. And in the example using sand, this is comparable to those who take sand and they make computer chips out of sand. Did you know computer chips are made out of silicon? Ordinary sand. But there you need expertise, which is even higher than the skills you need to make glass. I've talked about four ways in which we can respond to the word of God. Uh, the level of the, you know, playing with the sand, the level of uh, the semi-skilled uh, who lives by the word at the basic level, and then the third level of the skilled laborer, and then the expert. Now, some years back, I wrote a book, 
and I called it Lessons from Sand, it goes deeper in analyzing these various levels. And we had run out of print of uh, this book, and uh, recently we reprinted it, so you can get a copy of it. Uh, it will be available on sale. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to conclude. Why did I talk about trembling at the word of God? <clears throat> Eleven years ago, in the year 2020, God began to speak to me about coming back into the city. And a number of things happened at that time. And two years later, we celebrated Jubilee uh, in Uganda. 50 years after our independence, that was the year 2012. At that time, God began to speak to me about the next seven years. That is the year 2013 to 2019. God began to speak to us that these would be years of plenty in the country of Uganda and uh, many other countries. Now, the word came from the story of Joseph. God spoke to him about seven years of plenty and then seven years of scarcity. Now, I began teaching again after teaching on Jubilee. And I told brethren, these next seven years, 2013 to 2019, are going to be years of plenty in our country. Now, looking back now, after we've gone through those, that period, it has indeed been seven years of plenty. That is the time when most of these roads in Kampala were redone and the city got a transformation. Our university here, uh, Makerere, got a facelift and so on. Many schools came up. We now have primary schools which look like universities with high-rise buildings and so on. Much of this happened in the last seven years. Now, after the seven years of plenty in our country, and many countries experienced a similar thing, we came to 2019, and I began to wonder, Lord, what is going to happen next? And I knew we're entering seven years of drought, economic drought, and drought in every area of life. And sure, to the dot, as we entered 2020, we entered into the pandemic uh, of COVID-19. And we've had one year of drought. And I believe God gave me that word, we're going to have another six years of similar, maybe not COVID, but generally a difficult time economically. Now, I shared this word. And as I shared it, there was a lot of, you know, no interest and... Uh, and I, I said, look, what is going on? For me, I took the word seriously because I tremble at God's word. Trembling at God's word, not only the written word, but also prophetic word, as long as you have guidance and you know this is God. Now, we have begun the drought. And I've been looking at my brethren. And it seems many are not prepared. Because when God gives the word, we didn't tremble at his word. I want to conclude this way. Can we examine our lives and we see what class of respondents to God's word we are? Are we people who play around with God's word? Are we serious students of God's word so that we become skilled? Have we gone to the level of preparing our hearts to make sure that the word touches us to the kind of level it touched Ezra, or are we people who are not serious about the word of God? And if we go on like this, the next few years are going to be very difficult for believers, except for those who are able to plug into God and they respond to God's word seriously and God will be able to guide them. I'll stop here and I'll lead in prayer. Lord our God, we come before you. We thank you very much for men like Ezra who give us an example of the way we need to live as respondents to, go to your word. Forgive us because most of us have been at the level of child play. We have been like King Saul who didn't take the word of God seriously and ended up, he ended up being rejected by God. And Lord God, we want to ask you for forgiveness for many of us who started at the 
basic level, like in school in primary one, and yet we have never progressed to any higher levels. Lord, we ask you that you may help us to move on to the level of the serious, serious uh, applicants of the word of God, the level of the skilled laborer, and help us to move on to even higher levels to the level of the expert. Thank you, Lord our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you to a meeting which I'm going to host beginning this coming Thursday from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. It will be a physical meeting at um, um, it will be a physical meeting taking place at um, a hotel, at, at a restaurant nearby here. It's called Amazing Grace Restaurant. It's just next to Bible Society. But we'll also host the meeting uh, on Zoom. Now, I have leaflets here, but also we have advertised it. And you can get in touch with us, uh, with me, or we, you can get in touch with the church uh, for more details. It will be a meeting from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And we have called it Africa Restoration Workshop. It will be a workshop. Now, we'll be distributing materials. We'll be showing videos. We'll be, it will be a very serious workshop. And what we're dealing with is how to respond to the globalist movement which has got underway beginning last year as we moved into COVID. We believe God has the answer for the world. And God has his own winning plan for the next few years. We'll be sharing that at this Africa Restoration workshop. God bless you very much.